In the world of Boruto, we have multiple characters with insane power levels and unique abilities you wouldn't have imagined for this universe. Even so, times have changed and so has the power structure within Naruto. That's why in this video I'll be counting down a list of the top 20 strongest characters in Boruto and explaining why that's the case. But if you have any contentions with this list, let me know in the comment section down below. Now this video will contain massive spoilers from both the Naruto and Boruto manga, so fair warning if you aren't caught up, but if you are, grab your popcorn and get strapped in, because this might be a long one. Starting off at number 20, we have Okage Kakashi. Now Kakashi isn't weak by any means but he doesn't have the feats in Boruto that would put him above the other Kages. He no longer has the Sharengan which prevents him from using the Shidori effectively so he doesn't use it. This is because the Jutsu requires that you have a high enough perception to keep up with such speeds or you will leave yourself open to attacks. So what this means is that while Kakashi is stated to be stronger than the version of himself who fought Madara and Obito, he still took a perception and speed debuff which is why he sticks to using the purple line lightning instead. Along with the fact that when Momoshiki attacked the village, Sasuke took the strongest members in the village to go save Naruto and he wasn't one of them. This puts him below everyone else on this list. So that's what made you remember your old man, huh? At number 19, we have Gara. I have Gara this low on the list not because he's weak but because there are other characters way stronger than him. He does have some feats in Boruto, the main one is of him being able to catch Fuse Momoshiki while he was charging at him. Now some people see this as an amazing feat that somehow makes him relative to Fuse Momoshiki. I see it completely differently since for one, Momoshiki was charging at him at a distance which gave him time to use his range attack which is his sand. Along with the fact that Momoshiki wasn't going all out since base fatigue Naruto was also able to block and react to some of his attacks as well. It's clear the distance helped since Momoshiki instantly broke out and folded Gara with one punch while smiling. Coupled with the fact that we then later had the same Momoshiki contending with 6 bad sage mode Naruto. It's clear Momoshiki was holding back before unless you believe he's relative to base fatigue Naruto and 6 bad sage mode Naruto was holding back his physical prowess which wouldn't make any sense given the context. And you'll also have to concede that Fuse Momoshiki is slower than base Urashiki who Gara couldn't catch with his sand later on in Boruto, which wouldn't make sense since base Momoshiki is stronger than Urashiki, so Fuse Momoshiki should be way stronger than that. In essence, that Fuse Momoshiki feat doesn't mean much for Gara given the context. And now sad. <laughs> At number 18, we have Dari, the fifth Raikage. We'll just use Taijutsu. And will take you down with brute force. Now the reason why I have Dari over Gara is because he was actually able to press Momoshiki by himself and in the novelization of the Boruto movie his Taijutsu skills were compared to that of Naruto and Sasuke by Kinshiki himself and this was after Kinshiki fought Sasuke. He also has mastery over wind release, water release, lightning release and storm release. So in an apathetical battle with Gara, he has the elemental advantage since earth is weak to lightning and sand is a byproduct of earth which which Gara controls using magnet release. Dari is also superior in speed and physical strength, which would also give him the edge in battle. At number 17, we have Delta. Now this is where we get into the top tiers of the verse. Delta is very strong but her power is somewhat overrated because people tend to ignore the context of the fight she had with Naruto and also the statements that puts her below the other characters on this list. Focusing on the fight itself that she had with Naruto, base Naruto was able to throw Delta around before she decided to go all out. Naruto then pretended to lose the fight because he wanted Delta to feel comfortable about spilling the beans on Kara and to also find out the types of abilities they possess and also the limitations to those abilities. Naruto's plan was later noticed by Delta so Naruto told her that he will now be going all out. Now people interpret this to mean that Naruto actually went all out when if you look at the context Naruto said ooh I'm scared in a jeering manner which likely means that he was teasing Delta. Along with the fact that Naruto later held back his Rasengan so that he wouldn't kill Delta which adds to the idea that he was still holding back the entire time. Yes Naruto was getting 
getting tired because he was allowing himself to get banged up by Delta so that he could gauge her abilities. Naruto already figured out the extent of her physical capabilities which is why Naruto decided to test the limitations of her absorption ability as he stated in the manga. This is backed up by Kawaki stating that Naruto has full control of the battle and also the statement that puts Delta below Boro and limited code. This brings us to number 16, Boro. Now as I stated earlier, you have this statement by Code saying that Delta clearly isn't a match for Naruto so it's going to be up to him or Boro. Delta herself didn't disagree with Code's statement but also asked for another chance that was not given. You also have this volume statement saying that Code possesses abilities that are on the levels of Boro's but surpasses those of Delta's which also means that Boro's abilities surpasses Delta. Now that doesn't mean that Boro is physically stronger than Delta but nothing says that Delta is physically stronger than Boro. We only have statements directly stating that Boro is above Delta in some way, never the opposite. When it comes to feats, people say that Boruto lost the kids and got damaged by kids, which really doesn't mean anything since there's nothing to suggest that Delta would tank the attacks that destroyed parts of Boro's body. You'll also hear arguments saying that Boro couldn't react to Boruto and Kawaki when it's clearly shown that Boro was playing around for the majority of the fight and easily blitz all of them multiple times when he decided to do so. He only got caught off guard by Sarada in the manga since she used the Shidori at the last moment while he was distracted by Boruto and Kawaki. The Shidori itself does amp speed and it caught Boro off guard since he didn't know she had that ability. Even then, they still weren't able to defeat Boro and Momoshiki had to possess Boruto's body and steal some of Kuruma's chakra to kill him. So I think based on what I've provided earlier, Boro is likely the superior Kara member. Coming in at number 15, we have Kashin Koji. Now contrary to popular belief, Kashin Koji is not Jigen nor Ishiki level when you put those fights into context. Koji's biggest feat in Boruto is defeating a Jigen who had almost zero chakra as stated by Amado. Du could barely breathe properly before the fight even began as stated by Kashin Koji himself. So Kashin Koji beating this half dead Jigen does not put him above nor near the level of Naruto and Sasuke who fought a full power Jigen, much less being above full power Jigen himself. Kashin Koji and Amado themselves stated that they needed Naruto and Sasuke to weaken Jigen since Kashin Koji doesn't have anywhere near the power to take him down. Let alone Ishiki who literally played with this dude the entirety of the fight, absolutely demolished him using a pillar then flexed on him with some fine wine. The best concrete feat Kashin Koji has in Boruto is of him folding Konohamaru. And then again Konohamaru was fatigued from his fight with Ao and the fights he had before that. Kashin Koji really only has feats against characters when they are not at full power Power, so it's very hard to scale him properly. However, Kashin Koji was confident that he could defeat Delta while he was in base which Amado didn't contest to and this was after watching her fight Naruto who again is stated to be above Kashin Koji by Amado himself. So him being confident that he could quickly deal with Delta in base and Amado cultivating him to take down Jigen rather than Delta implies that he's the stronger of the two. Now people have theorized that the second Delta who Kashin Koji was confident he could defeat was somehow weaker than the delta we saw before which was never stated nor implied. So it's safe to say that they are the same unless proven otherwise. Now at number 14 we have Kinshiki Otsutsuki. Now this guy is a beast, especially when it comes to taijutsu since he actually trained to own his skills unlike Momoshiki. This was especially shown in his fight versus Sasuke, being able to keep up to and press Sasuke within key moments during the fight. However, a key thing to note here is that this was not Sasuke at full power since he had been traveling between dimensions examining Kaguya's scrolls so he was a little low on chakra and had to conserve what he had left to get home. And he also didn't use his Mangekyo Sharengan. 
Now this doesn't really invalidate Kinshiki since he was still able to contend with multiple Kages before Sasuke got involved and cut down the god tree with a single swing of his sword. He also has the ability to amplify his muscle density to get stronger and increase his speed using his lightning release cloak, something he didn't use against the Kage for some weird reason. He's also stated to have the power to split worlds in the data books which is something he also never displayed against the Kage so it's likely hyperbolic. Either way Kinshiki is a beast and deserves the top 14 slot. At number 13 we have Momoshiki Otsutsuki. <laughs> So what will you do? You vulgar creatures train and persevere endlessly and pointlessly all for nothing. And just to be clear, this is base Momoshiki, not fused Momoshiki. So we're only using feats of this version of the character such as being able to absorb a star in the novels and straight up fatherizing Killer B and the A-Tails. Now Momoshiki doesn't have much feats in the anime or manga since he allows Kinshiki to do most of the work. And while the other Kage such as Dari and Gara were able to press him, they were never actually able to land a hit on Momoshiki and Momoshiki never really used any of his abilities. I am not entirely sure why they wrote Kinshiki and Momoshiki to not use their full potential against the Kages but it is what it is. When it comes to abilities, Momoshiki can absorb any attack hurled at him using his Renegon and also has the power to amplify the attacks he absorbs and throw them back at his opponents. He would easily be able to do that to Delta and fold her the same way Naruto did with his massive Rasengan. And he would do the same thing to any member of Kara including Kashi Koji. Now at number 12 we have Sage Mode Naruto. You see, it's just that we ninja don't like to make things easy, you know? Now I did make a video explaining the true power of Sage Mode Naruto which you guys can go watch after this one, the link will be in the description. But to briefly touch on the topic, I have Sage Naruto above base Momoshiki and everyone else below him because Naruto who after tanking the strongest attack displayed by Momoshiki and having Kuruma's chakra extracted for hours to the point where he could barely stand and was still able to scrap with Fuse Momoshiki who is far stronger than base Momo. Now I do acknowledge that Fuse Momoshiki likely wasn't going all out since he was scrapping with 6 pad sage mode naruto later on in that fight. But it's still an impressive feat for base fatigue naruto to be able to tank multiple attacks from fused momoshiki and also reacted to him multiple times, especially since the other kage got folded by one punch. This means that base naruto scales above the other kages which means that sage naruto would absolutely demolish them. We also have to remember that limited code who was scrapping with true essence boruto and directly stated to surpass delta in combat ability in V jump and in the manga itself had to use Shikamaru as an hostage to force Naruto into allowing him and Boroshiki to kill him. If they could have defeated Naruto so easily because they're far stronger than him, they would have done so without needing to use an hostage to restrict his movements. We also have to remember that Boroshiki at this point is 80% fused Momoshiki which means he's stronger than base Momoshiki, yet they had to resort to such tactics to beat Naruto. Along with the fact that Hei fatigue half dying no renegan sasuke who just got brutally spanked by shiki was able to keep up to and press boroshiki who rested and pretended to be unconscious the entire fight now people will say that he didn't have enough chakra which isn't true since he was able to use a vanishing rasengan shadow clones and even space time ninjutsu which we know uses a lot of chakra he likely didn't have a lot but neither did half dying sasuke full power sage mode naruto is way above that sasuke so he would be be way above that version of Borushiki and base Momo. What? Now at number 11 we have Borushiki himself and the arguments really are the same, a fatigued half dying no renegan Sasuke who just got brutally spanked by Shiki was able to keep up and press Borushiki who rested and pretended to be unconscious the entire fight. Now a later Borushiki had to team up with Code and held an hostage just so they could beat Sage Mode Naruto. Borushiki by all regards is using 80% of Fuse Momoshiki's power at this time which means he's above base Momoshiki and would also 
also score way above anyone below base Momo. This reason is why I have him above Sage Mode Naruto. Despite his lacking feats and that's because Boroshiki who now exists in the manga is now 100% Otsutsuki which likely means he's far stronger than before. This would likely mean that this version of Boroshiki scales above Sage Mode Naruto specifically which would make sense since he needs to contend with Kawaki in the future. Speaking of Kawaki, coming in at number 10, we have Kawashiki. Now Kawashiki only has one showing in this form and that's when he fought 80% Borishiki who had the chakra to spam Rasengan's. The issue with Kawaki's karma seal is that he should be easily above Borishiki since he has the karma seal from the stronger Otsutsuki. But for some reason based on how the fight was portrayed they were mostly relative. Due to this I have to rank Kawaki this low on the list since he clearly isn't using the full power of his karma as yet and naturally he would get stronger later on in the series and he would start topping this list. At number 9 we have pre-nerf Renegon Sasuke. Now we don't need to go over everything Sasuke can do to understand why he's this high on the list. As stated prior, a low chakra version of Sasuke who didn't even bother to use his Mangekyo amp was fighting on par with a full power Kinshiki who actually fought way harder there than he did versus the actual Kages. This same Sasuke while not being at full power since using the space time ninjutsu drains a lot of your chakra was able to still scrap with Fuse Momoshiki alongside Naruto but was still inferior to him by himself. And as I mentioned earlier, a fatigue half dying no Renegon Sasuke who just got brutally spanked by Ishiki was able to keep up to impress Borushiki who rested and pretended to be unconscious the entire fight. That Borushiki is 80% fused Momo so a full power pre-nerf Renegon Sasuke would absolutely demolish him. At number 8 we have fused Momoshiki. It's going to be your turn next. Now as you guys know, Fuse Momoshiki is the combination of Base Momoshiki and Kinshiki's power. The name Fuse Momoshiki is really just a fan name since they really didn't fuse. Momoshiki just turned him into a chakra fruit and then consumed his power. With that being said, Fuse Momoshiki is far stronger than Base Momoshiki which means he's far stronger than anyone else below Base Momoshiki on this list. He's also more powerful than Borushiki since he's only using 80% of Fuse Momoshiki's power. Unless you think that 20% of Boruto is stronger than 20% of Fuse Momoshiki and if that's the case I recommend getting your annual checkouts because that doesn't make sense. I also have Fuse Momoshiki above Renegon Sasuke since Naruto really did most of the work in their fight versus Fuse Momoshiki and Sasuke lost his brief 1v1 tussle with Momo and almost died in multiple continuities. Now I do have my gripes, my personal gripes with how Sasuke chooses to use his abilities that could have easily gotten him out of those situations that almost cost him his life but he didn't use them for some weird reason but we'll save that for another video. Don't misunderstand you piece of garbage! Who cares even if I can't see it? Coming in at number 7 we have 6 bad sage mode Naruto. Let's teach him a lesson, Sasuke! Yes, I have Naruto above Fuse Momoshiki and there's a reason for that. I think people tend to ignore the context behind the fight they had and scale Momoshiki way higher than he should be. What people need to consider is that Naruto who fought this full power Fuse Momoshiki was nowhere near full power himself. We have to remember that before the fight even began, Naruto used up his and Kurma's chakra to contain the attack at the Chunin exams so that the villagers wouldn't get damaged. Yes, in 6 paths, Sage mode which also uses the KCM chakra cloak, he's using both his and Kuruma's chakra even in the avatar state. This was actually confirmed back in the war arc in Shippuden when he first awakened KCM 2. So after expelling that amount of chakra to contain the blast, a blast that he could have easily countered as stated by Sasuke himself, Naruto is knocked unconscious. Momoshiki then proceeded to absorb Kuruma's chakra for hours after the battle since Naruto was resisting. This added to his fatigue since we know that extracting a tail B 
release can lead to the death of the user since it reduces their life force. Naruto could barely stand and was barely conscious when Sasuke saved him. We also have to note that Momoshiki absorbed 50% of Kuruma's chakra that was remaining after he tanked the attacks at the Chunin exam, which means that the Naruto that fought Fuse Momoshiki was heavily fatigued as was shown and also had less than 50% of Kuruma's chakra. And yes, this was stated by Momoshiki himself that he reached the halfway point. Halfway point simply means that he absorbed 50% of Kuruma's chakra. And yet he was still able to go toe to toe with Fuse Momoshiki in the anime and won their brief 1v1 tussle and absolutely demolished Fuse Momoshiki by himself in the manga. And yes, Momoshiki did slam the Kurama avatar but that was a less than 50% Kurama so this means nothing to an apathetical full power Naruto. Naruto didn't even use boy release to amp his strength and had faith in his 12 year old son that he could pack up Momoshiki who just healed and stacked up on power by eating the pills gained by absorbing half of Kurama's chakra. Yes, that literally happened. And yes, Momoshiki died to a giant Rasengan given to Boruto from a base fatigue Naruto. Let that sink in. By all measures a Naruto with full power would absolutely fold Fuse Momoshiki. How dare you? Now at number 6 we have Jigen. Now Jigen is just another tier of power in Boruto since he has the karma of Ishiki Otsutsuki who is far stronger than Fuse Momoshiki. He was able to easily manhandle full power Naruto and Sasuke which is the difference with Fuse Momoshiki in a way Fuse Momoshiki never could and this was while his body was dying. Also being able to easily kick and punch through the Suzano and Kurma avatar, we really don't need to go into much detail to validate Jigen's spot on this list, his feet speaks for themselves. Now at number 5 we have Limitless Code. Now although Code barely has any W's in Boruto at the moment, he's still one of the strongest characters ever introduced into the franchise itself. I'm not kidding, dude's power was stated to exceed Jigen himself to the point where they had to place a limiter on his body so that they could preserve the power structure within Kara. So that simply means that he surpasses every character below Jigen on this list. He would be much higher on the list but a certain character stopped this from happening. Speaking of that character, coming in at number 4 we have Damon. Now Damon is the brother of Ada who has abilities stemming from the cells of Shiba Otsutsuki and also is one of the cyborgs stated to surpass Jigen in combat ability. But not only does he surpass Jigen, he also surpasses Limitless Code who is also above Jigen which means that he is vastly superior to Jigen. Just to put a little context into it, this guy literally no diffed Limitless Code without needing to use his overpowered reflection ability that allows him to reflect all attacks. So let's just say anyone below the limitless code level means absolutely nothing to Damon, including Kawashiki. Now before we get into the top 3 slots, I wanted to do some honorable mentions. Now Ada was first introduced as a character who has a charm ability which basically makes everyone infatuated with her. Well anyone aside from Otsutsuki and blood relatives. She also has a Serengan which allows her to view past and current events. Now in Boruto chapter 79, Ada's true ability was finally revealed and the name of that ability is Omnipotent. Momoshiki later explained that omnipotence is an ultimate power only an all-knowing almighty god can wield. It's a programming language the gods were said to have used to create worlds. The will to make anything real, that's what omnipotence is. So in essence, omnipotence is a reality warping technique that allows the user to bend reality to their will. So it's pretty overpowered. Now the reason why she is here is because she can't use the ability at will since she isn't Otsutsuki. Along with the fact that it's implied that she isn't a powerhouse when it comes to physical ability. She reluctantly freed her brother Damon because she needed someone to protect her in the event no karma base Kawaki attacks her and Code isn't there. So while she's implied to be one of the cyborgs that surpassed Jigen, we still haven't been provided with the specifics as to how she surpassed him. Of course, the list will be updated when we get more information. Now then we have Mitsuki. This guy possesses this unique sage mode that we know nothing about. All we know is that the form is insanely overpowered and it was created by Orochimaru. So when it comes to how it scales in the series itself, we don't have enough information to make that deduction. And then we have Sakura who should theoretically
theoretically be one of the strongest characters in the entire village and the entire world of Naruto to be honest but she lacks the feats to kind of scale her properly so we just have to say she's insanely powerful she's pretty strong but there's no evidence to really scale her against anyone else. Now I also wanted to touch on time skip Boruto because even though I scaled Boruto or Boruto below limited code or unlimited code earlier on this version of Boruto post time skip is seemingly stronger than unlimited code based on him being able to stomp on code and then dodge an attack from him. Now I want to be clear that code is in base which means he wasn't using the karma seal's power which is the entire basis for why code is so strong. So we can't really use this to say that yo Boruto is stronger than code but based on the dialogue in chapter 2 of Boruto 2 Blue Vortex, Boruto himself believes that he's stronger than unlimited code while he's using his karma seal. So if we go off based on what Boruto is saying then he would be above limited code in this form but we still don't have any feats on Boruto against this version of code so we're just gonna leave him here for now. Now coming in at number 3 we have Ishiki Otsutsuki. <laughs> Now Ishiki Otsutsuki stated to be vastly superior to Jigen. In fact he couldn't resurrect in Jigen's body because he wouldn't be able to handle the power of Ishiki and would die out after a few days. He was shown to be able to effortlessly body Naruto and Sasuke way better than Jigen did and was also stated to be unstoppable if he was able to resurrect in his perfect vessel Kawaki. He pretty much has the same abilities as Jigen since Jigen is the one using his karma seal. He's able to shrink himself and inorganic matter to a very small small size and also has the ability to summon objects from a pocket dimension. He also loves to spam rods and can manipulate gravity to some degree. And yes, Ishiki is above Damon because Damon is stated to surpass Jigen, not Ishiki. His reflection ability would also be useless in a 1v1 since he needs to be touching someone. Regardless, Ishiki is stronger than Damon until stated otherwise. Now at number 2 we have Baryan mode. Naruto. Now this might be obvious for some but contentious for others but let me break it down so you guys can understand where I'm coming from. Yes, Baron Mode Naruto did lose the fight against Ishiki since his power ran out first but that doesn't mean that he's weaker than Ishiki. In fact, it's flat out stated that Baron Mode Naruto's power far exceeds Ishiki's by Kurama himself. This is also shown in the fight where Naruto easily ragdolls Ishiki with low effort showing that he is indeed stronger and faster. Now because Baron Mode rapidly drains the chakra of the user, the form ran out before Naruto could complete the job but he did do enough to assure Ishiki's death. And just to make one thing clear, when Ishiki said that the punches weren't the issue referring to the life draining effect of Baron Mode, this was after the form started to rapidly drop in power as stated by Sasuke. We also have to factor in that Korma's chakra was heavily drained by Ishiki using his chakra rods before they even went into Baryan mode to the point where the KCM cloak disappeared. So the Baryan mode we saw isn't even full power Baryan mode Naruto while the Ishiki he fought was stated to be brimming with power. Now Jigen's body was dying out but Ishiki still had access to his power since that's exactly why the body was dying. You could even argue that this wasn't full power Ishiki but what's the comparison? We can only use what we actually know for a fact and what we know for a fact is that Baryan mode was stated and shown to be stronger than Ishiki. <laughs> Coming in at number 1 we have Shibai Otsutsuki. Now Shibai doesn't have any real feet since the character was just introduced but going by what was revealed by Amado, Shibai consumed so many fruits that he ascended into another realm of existence and left his physical body behind. Along with the fact that Ada's and Damon's overpowered abilities originated from Shibai's cells which means that he also possessed those abilities I explained earlier. So he would have the ability to hear and see past and present events, he would also be able to reflect intent and all forms of attacks. And he will also be able to fully use and operate omnipotence since he is a full-blooded Otsutsuki. And again, omnipotence is the programming language the gods were said to have used to create worlds, the will to make anything real, that's how busted Shibai is. If you really want to know how strong Shibai is, I have a 17 minute video breaking this down in detail so if you guys want to check it out, that video should be on screen right now. And that's it for this video itself, if you guys disagree with anything I said, drop it in the comment section, we'll have a discussion. And if you want to join the discord, the link will be in the description as well. So you can just join up and we can have a discussion there instead. Again, keep it civil in the comments guys, this isn't that serious, it's just anime, we're just power scaling here. If you guys disagree, we can disagree respectfully. With that being said, drop a like if you like the video and subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you guys on the next one, peace out.